So we're going to continue talking about the RAS, RAF, MEC, ERC pathway. We've talked about RAS, and we've talked about RAF, and we've talked about how RAF phosphorylates and activates MEC uh, as part of a kinase cascade. Uh, we need to talk a little bit more about RAF because RAF is commonly dysregulated in human cancers and is also a target for drugs that can be used to treat cancers. So let's talk a little bit more about RAF and cancers. And again, to remind you, RAF is a kinase. There are different versions of RAF. There's a RAF, there's B RAF, there's RAF1. Um, but again, RAF is a kinase. It's regulated by RAS and it can, phosphor it can phosphorylate MEC. And in many human cancers, RAF is constantly active. Why? So that's a great question. There are two main reasons why RAF, the kinase, is constantly active in cancer cells. Those reasons are mutations upstream of RAF, so the things that control RAF, those can be mutated, or you get a mutations within the RAF gene. So this makes, it's gonna make RAF an oncogene. Let's talk about the first category first. So, uh, oh, and we will talk about the fact that drugs can actually be used to, to inhibit RAF and therefore you'd be used to treat cancers, but we'll get to that later. So, uh, uh, what is upstream of RAF? What does that mean? That talks about everything that comes before RAF that can control RAF's activity. So, in previous videos, we talked about receptor tyrosine kinases and how they're linked to RAS and how RAS is linked to RAF. So, if there are mutations in receptor tyrosine kinase, EGF receptor mutations, HER2 mutations, um, <clears throat> those mutations can lead to uh, receptor tyrosine kinase is being constantly phosphorylated, which will constantly send a signal to RAS to always be bound with GTP. And when RAS is bound to GTP, uh, often uh, RAS is when RAS is RAS, RAS when RAS is bound always to GTP, that will stimulate RAF. As we talked about in the previous video, RAF binds RAS GTP. And that allows RAF to change its conformation, open up, become phosphorylated, and be active. So mutations in growth factor receptors or receptor tyrosine kinases can lead to constant RAF activation. That's one upstream mutation. Another one, which we talked about in the videos that we talked about RAS, is mutations in the RAS gene. So if RAS is mutated, remember RAS is an oncogene, when RAS is mutated, it abolishes its GTPase activity. And if RAS is no longer a GTPase, it cannot shed that terminal phosphate and reset itself to being bound with only GDP. It is stuck with RAS being bound to GTP. So a mutation in the RAS gene, which will lead to which leads to abolishing RAS's GTPase activity, leads RAS to always be bound to GTP, and therefore RAF always active because RAF is just going to bind to RAS GTP, which will activate RAF. So those are mutations upstream of RAF. Now, what about mutations in the, in RAF itself? So uh, let's look at the uh, RAF gene. Uh, there's the RAF gene. And the mutations that we're going to commonly find in RAF are point mutations. So Point mutation, um, you know, hopefully it's, you know, change in one amino, one nucleotide, which could lead to one amino acid change. Um, so, and we covered mutations in a previous video. These point mutations in RAF will uh, lead to its activity, its enzyme activity being always active. And I've drawn in here on the RAF protein, I've drawn a new amino acid, valine at position 600. So, this valine at position 600 plays a very important structural role in the RAF protein. And I've drawn the uh, codon um, in the RAF gene that codes for this valine. It's GTG. If you look up uh, on, the, on the genetic code table, you'll find GTG codes for a valine. So in some human cancers, that T in the middle of that codon is mutated to an A. One nucleotide change leads to one amino acid change in RAF. So instead of a valine at position 600, 
it is a glutamic acid at position 600. So if you've taken biochemistry, you should know the difference between a valine residue and a glutamic acid residue. They are very different amino acids, right? Glutamic acid is large and negatively charged. Valine, very small and hydrophobic. So this uh, change in one amino acid disrupts RAF's uh, conformation. So what does that mean, disrupts its conformation? So if you recall, uh, RAF um, it can exist in a closed conformation when RAF is in the cell, but RAF is bound to GDP. RAF is in this closed conformation. Its kinase activity is not activated. It's not phosphorylated by some kinases. But when RAF is mutated from that valine to a glutamic acid at position 600, guess what? That negative charge triggers a change in the three-dimensional conformation of RAF that it opens up uh, on its own. It does not need RAS bound to GTP. And now it can become phosphorylated by some kinase and it can activate. So now this mutant RAF is active. So a point mutation in RAF, uh, position 600, uh, causes its kinase activity to be always active. So this is, again, what allows us to call RAF an oncogene. It is promoting growth when it is mutated. And what does this mutation do? It allows the enzyme to be active um, and does not need the uh, permission or binding of RAF GTP. So RAF point mutations are very common in human cancers. About 10% of human cancers have a mutation in the RAF gene. So again, what are these mutations? They are activating mutations. They activate RAS, RAF's kinase activity. And about 50, 50 to 60% of melanomas actually have RAF mutations. Again, very commonly at amino acid 600. This is a key amino acid for maintaining the conformation of RAF. So it's a very uh, important amino acid and disrupting it uh, disrupts uh, RAF in such a way that um, RAF is always active. So it's important to understand how RAF is mutated and how that affects its activity. Now let's talk about uh, targeting RAF. So um, if you can design a drug to target RAF, what would you want that drug to do? So again, RAF in many human cancers, the kinase is always active, always phosphorylating MAC, and that's driving the cells into S phase. So what would be great to design? What kind of drug would inhibit a kinase? That's right, it is a kinase inhibitor. So there are drugs on the market that are kinase inhibitors that bind to the ATP binding pocket of RAF and inhibits RAF's ability to bind ATP and phosphorylated substrates. So there is a, a, one example I'll give you of this drug. I cannot pronounce the name of the drug. There's the generic name. Uh, Vemervafenib. So that's uh, those three amino, those three letters at the end, NIB, should tell you that that is a um, kinase inhibitor. Um, and the brand name for that is Zelboraf. So that is the brand name. Um, and if you uh, investigate the mechanism of action of this drug, it'll tell you it's a kinase inhibitor and inhibits. Now, if you read some of the literature, it says BRAF. V600. So um, BRAF uh, is actually just BRAF, and V600E is the valine to 600, valine to uh, glutamic acid um, mutation uh, at, 600, at the amino acid number 600. So when you see BRAF, it just means RAF. Um, so that is uh, RAF and the mutations in RAF. 